if you have a good culture, you, anybody will assimilate into that culture. That's not I, always true. I mean, many people in this country haven't assimilated. Well, that's because you don't try to assimilate them and you keep telling them their culture, your culture is not good enough to, to, to assimilate into. If you actually break down what Nazism is, they don't disagree with it. America is by far the, mo the best country in human history and right. has contributed more to, to human life than any other country in human history, in spite of its flaws. I want to uh, test the, your Ayn Rand philosophy versus conservatism. Because it's, it's one thing to say communism sucks. Okay, that's pretty easy, right, for people like us. But what about conservatism? Well, I didn't say it sucks. I said it was evil. No, Big yeah. difference. Okay. <laughs> Nuanced, but I'm yeah. just joking. Yeah. I'm not nuanced. Yeah, no, no nuanced, yeah. <laughs> but um, conservatism, so, so if someone is fiscally conservative, they're like, you know what, I'm for small government when it comes to money and yeah. don't tell me how to spend my money and taxes yeah. and regulation. Yeah. But and this is what I was talking to. Do you know anybody like that? Uh, some people. Not really? That. Who are serious? Who actually mean it? Well, well, they, well they say it. They, they're willing to do away with 90% of the regulations that the government has imposed? And they, and they want to cut taxes dramatically? Potentially, yes. I mean, but conservative usually want to conserve, and, the, cons and, they want to conserve and they want to conserve the present. They don't want to conserve a hundred years ago. They're not that ra that would take radicalism. That would take revolution, but, and they don't believe in a revolution. They want to conserve the present. Sure, but or my, maybe ten years. Ago. But my question is, but they're wimps. But okay, they're wimps. But my question is, with with regards to conservatism, there is this idea that this country or whatever country isn't just a piece of land where we live. It it means something. Right. Yes. It has a national history, has a national pride, and you are someone who advocates for free market. So I'm assuming there will be private schools for everyone. And if there are private schools for everyone, there's not a national curriculum where a conservative would be like, you know what, this country, US or UK, these are our values. This is what we stand for. Whether you're an immigrant or a leftist, rightist, you have to believe in this. What would be your answer to the conservative who wants to conserve that national pride or history, whatever, those core values? How scary is that? that some group of politicians are going to decide mm. what the core values that are going to be taught my child are going to be. I mean, that's what's happening today in our educational system, and it is really, really, really so bad. So you would leave it up to individual uh, Absolutely. people? Absolutely. And, then, and this then, is the problem. But then you get the problem that you could get a, a very radical view of what a, a child's value should be, and there, there comes the indoctrination you know, you can, you can be okay into You know, you either believe in freedom or you don't believe in freedom. And that, okay. it's, it's essentially that. If you believe in freedom's right, in, in, in individuals' rights to, to, to raise so their own if, children, if to Nazi, educate their if own Nazi children. To, or communists want to have As long a, as they don't use force, the state has no role in intervening in their life. And as long as they're not beating their children, as long as they're not abusing their children, they have a right to educate their children as they see fit. Well, one could and, argue and that abusing children is not simply physical. It's also once you get into that, then you know maybe maybe by saying something that upsets you, I'm abusing you, and now the state should intervene. These are the arguments against free speech. The, no, the role of the state is to protect us from physical harm, not from mental harm, not from things we don't like or mm. disagree. This is why I, I'm against hate speech laws. I'm against all restrictions on free speech, because. That becomes very dangerous and very subjective. What is yes. speech that is okay and what is not? Same with children. Now, I don't think it's a good idea to send your kid to a madras. I don't think it's a good idea to send your kid to a, 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 an Aryan uh, a buddy Nazi school. <laughs> Would be or, or for that matter, any any yeah, yeah. any school today run by the government that is mm. not quite communist, but on the way there, right? So, so, so my my mm. my view is that should be left completely to parents. And look. It, it, there is a challenge in the West, and that is what is the nature of the state? What is the identity of the state? What makes a state a state? And, and, and it's, it's a real problem, and it's, it's, it's a problem you're seeing particularly in Europe. And, I, I mentioned, and, yeah. and, 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 and this is what makes, I think, the United States unique and where Europe could learn from the United States. The United States is not a place that is defined by borders. It is not a place defined by history. It's not a place defined by color of skin, it's not a, face, a place defined even by religion. The United States is a place defined by a couple of documents. It's a place defined by ideas. The ideas of individual rights, the ideas of liberty, the ideas of freedom, and the idea of reason. The idea of bringing everything before reason. That is at the base of the American Declaration I mean, of Independence that could be, and Constitution. Uh, disputed. I mean, I know American history is, is, is Slavery and racism. I know people say that all the time, but people well, of course, course yeah. of course, those things. American American history has lots of warts and it has mm. lots of problems in it. It's not a perfect country by any means, 
but it was founded on the right ideas, even if they mm -hmm. applied them badly. The ideas at the founding right. were the right ideas, and that's what defines America, and that's what makes America unique, and what has made American history, but then I think, unique. For that America is by far the, mo the best country in human history, and right. has, has contributed more to, to human life than any other country in human history, in spite of its flaws, and mm. it has had flaws, mm. big ones, big slavery yeah. being the biggest. So, b before we get on to the best country in the world. So for Europe, yeah, for, Europe, for Europe needs yeah. to define an identity. And, and how, do you, how do you do that? Yes, it, well... So, for example, let's take this country. If I say British, I am British. Yes. So forget about colour of skin, forget about race. Yes. What does British mean? And this, we've had this conversation so many times over the last yeah. 10, 15 years. Yeah. People say it's uh, the Parliament, it's Buckingham Palace, it's the Queen, it's the Church, it's the this, it's the that. Or is it, or we are a country of immigrants. How do you decide what, what is British and does it even matter? Well, I think it does matter. I think how, how, who, I, I think, who I think, decides? Well, I mean, reality decides. Reality no, is always I mean, inside, I mean, right? That, that's the you have to identify it in reality. So the question to ask is, it's, it's a question of how you approach it. Hmm. The question to ask is, 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 is this. What is it? What is it about Britain yeah. that is good? What is it about being Britain that has led to Britain being successful? What is it about Britain right. that we want to perpetuate? Right. And it's not the church, it's certainly not the queen. It's it it it. it but it's it's a it's it's what is it? It's well, the it's okay. my in my view. Okay, right? go ahead. It's the Magna Carta. Hmm. It's it's the you know it's the it's a fight for individual rights. It's the abolition of slavery. It's it's certain key, it's the industrial revolution. It's certain key elements. So what is Britain about? Britain is the land. Oh, and it's most importantly in my view, most importantly by far. It's the Scottish and British Enlightenment. It's the 18th century, uh, which led to, of course, the abolition of slavery. Yeah. I mean, yes, Shakespeare yeah. has a role there, and you have to think about what about yeah. Shakespeare, yeah. because Shakespeare is a very mixed bag when right. it comes to when it comes to moral messages. It's a mixed bag. Right. But what about Shakespeare? You, are you preserving? It's a language. It's the drama. It's the beauty. It's the intelligence. So, what is it about? Well, I would say, Britain should become like America, right? The ideas, the ideas of America are true ideas. They are the good ideas for every country. Okay, okay. Uh, it, Britain has a particular spin on them that, that is connected to John Locke and, and to, the, into, into the, the Enlightenment. So what is Britain? Britain is the Enlightenment. Britain is the idea of reason, individualism, individual rights. Okay. That is what Britain I'm going to challenge that. Put my... And of course, it's, it's, it's... Yeah, go ahead. Empire. Many people, if you ask what about Britain, yeah, sure. they would say empire. Sure. And people of my heritage, Pakistan, India, or parts of Africa and other places, yeah. they say that we understand Britain through empire. And that's what made Britain great. Great Britain, this arrogant thing. How could you say you're Great Britain? You've conquered over a third of the world, wherever it is, and then you have the audacity. Well, two things I'd say to that. One is its definition by non-essential. That is not the essential of what made it. The fact that Britain could conquer a third of the world, you have to ask yourself what made it so powerful. The mechanism that in place. What, what, right. what made it so powerful? That's what's interesting, not the fact that it conquered. The fact that it conquered... If you, you know, you could view it as a negative, but, but if you view it as a negative, then you have to ask yourself, you know, is it true that what Britain did in all these colonies mm. was on net, ne uh, negative, or was it on net positive? Mm. Now, I'm not justifying the empire. Yeah. A lot of the stuff done in the empire was horrific, just like in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't justify yeah. slavery. Uh, but, you know, is India better off or worse off for, 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 the, for, for Pakistan possible? That's, that's for, the question for, if you for, ask about India. For the railroads, for the, for the educational system, the, right. the, 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 the British educational system. But putting that aside, that is not what's essential about Britain. Now, it's true. As, as, as a foreigner looking at Britain, you might say that's how I know it, but then you come here and you study the history and you study the ideas and you have to define Britain not based on what the worst of it is. That's not the essence of a place, right? It would be like saying, well, Germany's Nazis. That's it. Mm. And nobody says that, right? You know, because it's politically incorrect to say, well, Germans are Nazis. That's it. You know, we, we're going to treat, yeah, we're yeah. Gonna treat we're, they, they can mm. never overcome that. That's what they are. But they do that for Brits. They and do. they do that to Americans. They do that. Why do they do that? Because we're that good. See, the world hates virtue. The world hates goodness. The world hates capitalism. And it hates individualism. And the two countries that symbolize that more than any other countries in human history, Great Britain and the United States. Would you States, say they hate capitalism more than Nazism? They hate Nazism, but they don't hate the Germans because the Germans are not capitalists, they're not individualists. You see, they don't hate the fundamental ideas of Nazism, just like they don't hate the fundamental ideas of communism. They hate the manifestation of Nazism, but not the idea. So what is the idea of Nazism? It's collectivism. Everybody's a collectivist. Everybody's a collectivist today. 
uh, it's nationalism. Nationalism today is very popular. It's Superiority. racism. Superiority. It's, it's yeah. racism. Who's not a racist today? Many people don't. The know. left is a racist, yeah. right? The left has identity politics. It's full of racism. The vast majority of countries outside of Europe are. And, and the, and the, and, but even in Europe, mm -hmm. the left is racist. And, yeah. and the right is becoming more and more racist. Yeah, yeah. So if you actually break down what Nazism is, they don't disagree with it. And, and, and certainly if you break down what communism is, they don't disagree. What is communism about? Collectivism. They love collectivism. Living for your neighbor. Everybody thinks that's moral and that's your duty is to live for your neighbor. Sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, what did Lenin that. says? You have to break a few eggs to, 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 to make an omelet, right? So everybody believes that you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. So that's fine. So if you sacrifice okay. a few individuals for the collective, why so is that? Yeah. And that's why they still love communism. They don't have that the same negative association. And they still love the fundamental ideas behind Nazism. And that's why these things can repeat themselves and they can keep coming back. And why we have to be so vigilant. And why the only alternative to them is individualism and capitalism. And as long as we don't fight okay. for individualism, this is why I, I, was, I reject conservatism, because they're collectivists. They're just moderate collectivists as compared to the more radical So just on the last point, then I want to move on to something else. This is good and let me just say, I don't want to conserve anything. So I'm not a conservative. So I don't want to conserve, I, don't conserve, I want to conserve the good and I want to chuck the, the, the bad. But that's still and conserving so, something, so, so, right? Well, no, because the, 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 if it's British, it's good, right? I, you know, from their perspective. Right. I want to take British history and say, this is good. Okay, we'll keep that, Shakespeare. This is bad, the monarchy. We'll kick that out, right? I mean, what conservative would say, let's kick out the monarchy, that's true, right? That's true. So I want to, you know, National Health Service, awful, let's kick it out, mm. uh, which no conservative would say. No. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Oxford University, good, but let's make sure the government doesn't intervene too much so it's really a private institution, which is less and less over yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Right? Let's figure out, John Locke, good. Um, uh, Mill, half good, half bad. Right. right. So, and, it's and, a, so you, yeah, I, I want to case. discriminate yeah, case what is case. good and what is bad, okay. and let's keep all the good, and that's British. Right. That's so, what England represents. But again, this is the last point because yeah. I've got so much to cover. And I, I, this, is, this is a very interesting conversation. So much to cover. But on deciding what is good and bad, that again is subjective. Someone could say disagree with you and say, no, actually, I think Mill is better than Locke, or I think absolutely not. There's only one standard for deciding what is good and what is bad. Is it pro-human life or is it anti-human life? And and at the end of but the again, day, like I said, if you've got to crack a few eggs, again, it's wrong. But if you've got to crack a few eggs, hundred million people died. That's anti-human life. If a million people die, that's anti-human life. So you could argue that the British occupation of India, because it resulted in I don't know famines or whatever, was anti-human life. Fine, then it's bad, and we kick it out. But the standard is, mm. and we judge the history and we value: is it good for human life? Now we can look at Shakespeare and say, is Shakespeare good for human life? And I would say, and this is waste. You could conceivably see people argue because art is difficult, but no, Shakespeare is actually the balance, yes, massive yeah. enhancing yeah. human life and you know, the joy that you get from watching a Shakespeare play overrules any mm. other considerations and it's pro-human life. So yes, absolutely yes. Uh, you know, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, Kandinsky pro-human life? No, it's mm. garbage. It's splashing paint on a canvas is not art and contributes nothing to human life. Now, there, I, you know, defining objective standards for art is more difficult. Mm. But on most political issues, this is simple. Are people thriving? Are people getting rich? Are people enjoying their lives? Right. Are they dying of starvation or are they suffering in, in concentration right. camps? So it's very easy in my okay. view to look at history and say this is pro and this is against. Okay, um, now next question is open borders, immigration is communism. Uh, Mr. Brook is an enemy of capitalism slash the free market. That's a question. Whoever says that doesn't know what communism is. They have no conception of, cap of communism, and they certainly have no conception of what c capitalism is. So can you explain to me, and this is, again, coming back to the, the free market versus the conservative you know, way of thinking. They are for borders, limited immigration. You're saying no borders, no immigration. Uh, no, I, I'm a strong believer in borders. And I'm a strong believer in, in a nation state. I don't think, I think there are probably too many nation states, so there probably sure. should be a lot fewer of them. But I'm a strong believer in a nation state because you, you, need, you need a body of law. But then at the same time, particular you're pro immigration. I'm very pro immigration. Very pro immigration. Very pro immigration. So uh, how do you delineate that, or how do you differentiate that from the conservatives? Why are you pro and they are anti? Well, they're anti because, for many reasons. One, because there's a, there's a xenophobic streak in many conservatives that associate the nation not with an idea not with the good parts of history, but with color of skin or heritage or genes Culture or bloodline, 
Well, but culture, if you have a good culture, you, anybody will assimilate into that culture. That's not I, always true. I mean, many people in this country haven't assimilated. Well, that's because you don't try to assimilate them and you keep telling them their culture, your culture is not good enough to, to, to assimilate into. The fact is that if, if Britain was proud of its own culture and could define its culture, I mean, you earlier said we can't even define the culture, no. but if we defined it properly mm. and we had clear vision of what it actually was, then people would assimilate. Take the United States. The United States assimilation is happening all the time. Within two to three generations, people are completely assimilated into the culture. That was true of Italians and Irish and Jews of the 19th century, and it's and it's true of Mexicans and Hondurans it's actually, it's and, and Chinese yeah. today. You know, the, you most, the, the people from my background, Pakistanis or Indians that go to America, are very different to the Pakistani Indians that come to that's the That's because America has a defined culture. It understands what it is, or it used to. I think that's fading. It used to understand very clearly. See, a country that's free, and a country that knows what it is, is confident. It's not afraid of Asset. new people. Right. It's not afraid of new people coming in and, 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 and being convinced that they are good. So America is a melting pot where you bring your values in and, yeah. you, in and you keep the good ones and you trash the bad ones. And the problem in England today, and the problem in America today, and the rest of the world, is we, we, dare, we dare not say that there are bad values. Right? Because of multiculturalism, all values are equal. Mm. I say if you want to come here uh, as a Muslim, fine. But you realize that if you're going to treat the women, you, first of all, you, you can't, you can't, uh, you, you know, mutilate the genitals. That's against the law, and you'll go to jail, and you go to jail, and we'll throw away the key. Right? Mm. This is not. We're not going to be nice to you. And you can't if you if you beat your women, you know that will it's not be, that will not be tolerated. You will go to jail. And if you treat your women badly. You know, we might not be able to put you in jail for that, but we will ostracize you. We will tell call you, you that that is, we will call you out. We will tell you that that is mm. unacceptable behavior because that is not a way a civilized people behave. So what is lacking in the West is this spine. recognition. It's fine. It's fine. Right? It's a recognition that we have values. Our values are superior to those other values. That's why they're coming here, not we're going there. And that we need to assert those values, not by using force, but just by speaking up, by asserting them, by, by, by living by example and by telling people, you want to live here? Fine, but, Fine, but this is, so, so people assimilate when, when you have a clear set of values that you know yeah. what they are and you, and you fight for those You can values. only assimilate into something if you've defined it clearly, otherwise what am I assimilating yes. into? And, and the reason America right. is a place where people assimilate more to and certainly historically have assimilated easily it's because it's much clearer, it's much more well-defined, and okay. expectations are obvious. So let me ask... So, so to me, you know, this cultural threat is not a threat. I, I believe, for example, in American culture, people come, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll assimilate them, they'll okay. become Americans. So um, this is a threat or rather a concern that I've seen more on the right, conservatives, whatever you want to call it. If, for example, in 2070 or 2000, let's say, eight years' time nearly, the vast majority of Americans were of Mexican descent. Yeah, eighty percent. I'm just making up a number, whatever it is. I don't care. That's would you? Fine. You wouldn't care. Well, no. What I would ask you is, you know, what's what's the country like? That is, is, is it still a free country? Mm. Is is are the institutions still are the institutions okay, so still the same institutions? What if the language of government was Spanish? I think that would be a mistake. Why? Well, because I think that the to, to fully understand. The founding documents of America, they were written in English. English is part of the country. It's very easy to translate. Languages are not equivalent. But the, the point is mm. that, that if now the language is Spanish, then America has failed in assimilation. And that's a bad sign, right? So to me, it's not about the color of people's skin. It's not about where they come from. It's not about the culture they used to have. What culture do they have today? And if they've adopted English, and they and they love Thomas Jefferson and, and George Washington, and they and they love the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, and they love a system of divided government, you know, of, yeah, of yeah. government of, of the division of of of, um, of authority within yeah, the government. Yeah. That you know, if they love the system of government in America, and they love freedom, and and they want to be left what alone, if, and they want to leave other people what alone. If all of that was true, yeah. and these guys were libertarians as hell, or yeah, free market as yeah. hell. I don't care what but, color skin they but are. But they spoke Spanish. I, look, at Dan, if all of that were true, then I wouldn't care. <laughs> but but if all, but but that yeah. is so impossible to actually that wouldn't happen. And and indeed, you know, I don't care where you're free, right? So if you could establish an America in Mexico, if you could establish an America in Brazil, if you establish the, the China Congo or whatever, in yeah. the Congo, yeah. I don't care. I don't right. care who are the people. What I care about is, is individual value. human freedom, right. about the values. And I don't care who adopts those values. I want everybody mm. to adopt those values. But if some people adopt it first, 
I don't care where they come from. I, 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 you know, that's again the tribalism, the collectivism, the, 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 the ultimately the, the racism yeah. that, that infuses our culture. And, and I think it's, it's barbaric. And I think we live in a 21st century. It's time to end it. It's time to get over it. Last point on this. Many conservatives have said the way libertarians or free, free, free market people will think is unrealistic. They are talking about this in theory. Yes, I don't care about color skin and this kind of stuff. But in practice, when these people come from different countries and they, these countries are less developed and more tribalistic and they are not afraid of asserting their values, right? Even if, if those yeah. values are even yeah. suck. Now, if we libertarians or free market guys, oh, welcome, come into our country, whatever it is, and these guys, the way they treat their women or themselves or other people, and then there's a racial element to it sure. and there's a linguistic sure. element to it. Sure. And now certain streets sure. or towns or cities have changed sure. radically, sure. visibly. Sure. And sure. now the host or the native population yeah. is feels under threat. Yeah. So I'd say the conservatives need to, need to uh, focus their energies on what matters, and and f focus their energies on what is it that makes Britain Britain. What is it that makes it great? What, you know, focus their energies on defining the culture, in asserting themselves, in in, in changing the dialogue, and not letting the left, you know, uh, mm. not accepting multiculturalism and fighting against it. The battle is not. They shouldn't be expending all this energy on building walls. Instead, they should be expending the energy on defining a culture that they want to live under right. and, and, and mm -hmm. denouncing from the top of the ivory tower and from every other tower in the land, okay. denouncing multiculturalism. But look, it's, it's, it's more than that. You know, the state has only one role in my view. And that is the protection of individual rights. You can't protect individual rights of some by violating the rights of others. Right. You can't protect rights if you're violating rights. So by putting up borders, by, by putting up walls, by putting up restraints against innocent people, and we can define what innocent means, right? And, and I don't think everybody should be allowed in. You, you have to have some criteria. But by creating, by violating other people's rights, you're not protecting Britons. You, 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 at the end of the day, you're creating a government that now has more power than it had before. You're not going to be able to limit that power. Well, and, and that's what we've know. seen. We've seen governments <laughs> that are more statist, more involved, not just in the border, but in our healthcare, in our economy, in, in, every, in, aspect. Our, yeah. in every aspect of yeah. our lives. So, so I want to shrink government back to the point where, where it, it, you know, it is, it, you know, and every government, I, I strongly believe that every government should be unique and have its own geographic area. I'm not an anarchist. Um, every one of those governments should have a, should should be focused on protecting the individual rights, and it should not be violating people's rights. Okay. People have a right to cross the border. I have a right. You have a right to invite your family from Pakistan to visit you here, or to come and work for you. Mm. You have a business. You hire them. What is it my business, who you hire? What is it my business, who spends time in your home? What is it my business? Unless they are a threat to me, it's none of my business. Now, this is where the state needs to intervene. The only place for the state to intervene it's when it comes to immigration to life, yeah. is to try to figure out if there's a threat. Now, I am somewhat sympathetic to Muslim immigration bans because to the extent that we say we can't differentiate between the Islamists, the people who want to kill us, and, and, and the more, average, yeah. Yeah, the average yeah. Muslim who, 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 who could assimilate, uh, to the extent that I can't differentiate, okay, so no Muslims. Okay, fine. Um, but Poles, um, you know, non-Muslim Africans, you know, they're not a physical threat to us. They were th and if we're confident, they, they will assimilate, okay. they do assimilate. If you look around the culture, they have assimilated. And, you know, you look pretty assimilated to me. Thank you very much. In spite I of the fact that, that yeah. you come from a, what, a Muslim background, you yeah. come from a, from, a, from a family. And yet, here you are, what, second generation? You, you oh, weren't even born here. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you were born in Pakistan. So, so I mean, you're an example. That, that you. it's, it's, it's just not true yeah. that people don't assimilate. Okay. They do assimilate. And so, so you want you want to separate a threat. So you want to be able to at the border. You want to be able to to, to, to eliminate uh, anybody with an infectious disease. Obviously, anybody who has a criminal background. Uh, you know, particularly given that, or, or is engaged in cr criminal activity that you have Would information you let communists on. Would you come in? What's that? Would you let communists? Yes, come in? I, I wouldn't judge people's ideas. Um, and really, but I thought that was the whole thing. If someone's like, a I would judge their ideas, but it's not the government's job to judge ideas. Now. If we're at war with communism, so during the, during the Cold War, let's say, then no. 
right? Because we're at war. That's why I would exclude Islamists. Right now, I believe the West is at war with certain elements within the Muslim world. So you don't let, you know, during World War II, you didn't let Nazis in. I, so if there's a war, you exclude the people who are on the other side. Right. But there's no war with communism. Communism is a pathetic ideology that's dying. And, and you know, I, I'm not afraid of it. Okay. It's, not, it's not something you need to keep out because you're afraid of. Okay. 